someday you say I'm crazy, got no sense. She was a 10-year-old with a big voice and a big dream of stardom. But even at this ripe young age, this well-coiffed, well-rehearsed little entertainer was no Shirley Temple. This is the Britney Spears that the world knows now. Full of talent, full of sexual energy, but nevertheless, only 17 years old. She's that age group, she sings, she dances, she grew up doing those things, and she wants to have a good time. And the kids her age want to too, so she's speaking right to them. Rolling Stone magazine celebrated the age of Britney Spears with a sexy cover story. She's already had a number one single and CD, and she's the new face and body of Tommy Hilfiger. This small town Southern girl has truly gone big time. Still, there are those who find something just not right about striking gold selling this sexy image. If I had a 17-year-old daughter, she would not be walking out of the house like that. I think it's a shameful business, 17-year-old girl. But Lori Majewski of Teen People magazine disagrees. Brittany is a very healthy young woman at age 17, and um, I think that's why kids are really responding to her. She's very down to earth, so she can take it a little bit to the edge without getting in any trouble. But critics point to the Rolling Stone photos, shot by controversial photographer David LaChapelle. Well, you know, when, when we shot together for Rolling Stone, um, I was talking to Brittany, I said, you know, we don't want you to just be another one, you know, like another Debbie Gibson kind of, you know, goody two-shoes, because there's always backlash. I said, we're shooting for Rolling Stone, which has an older readership, which may resent having this teenager on the cover. I said, let's do something for them so that they give, give people something to talk about, you know what I mean? And something that sets you apart from everybody else. And let's do something a little bit more provocative. And she was up for that, I mean, it's coming from her. Again, I don't impose my ideas on people, it's a collaboration. So we knew what we were doing when we did those photographs. We knew they were gonna cause a little bit of a ruckus. They don't quite know it was gonna be that big of a ruckus. But I think it was smart because people really learned her name after that and it really gave people something to talk about. The Spears photos simply leave some critics a bit queasy. But Britney describes herself as a church-going young woman with good family values. And that, according to Rolling Stone's Joe Levy, explains her success. The girl next door with just a small touch of the devil mixed in. I think she is allowed to be extremely religious and wear hot pants. I believe that that is the 11th commandment. And it's people with small minds that would say differently. Women have been dealing with that kind of issue for a long time and it needs to go away. Me, baby, one more time. Jennifer Lopez isn't always the hottest star in Hollywood. Check out J-Lo's lost audition tape when she was just a number. With big curly hair, this 20-year-old aspiring star was trying out to be part of the dance group The Fly Girls on the show in Living Color. When I call your name, step over to the side. That means you have been picked. Everybody else, give yourself a round of applause. It was a great audition, OK? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let them know that it's, it's not, this is not the one. This, this is, is not the one. We're just <laughs> narrowing it down even further, okay? Okay, so girl with the blue top, checkered pants, Jennifer. Well before Pete Diddy or Ben Affleck, she was already singing about the opposite sex. Yes, Seem like someone else. I don't know how to take this. I don't see why he moves me. He's a man. He's just a man. And I've had so many men before in very many ways he's just
just one more. During this nationwide search that attracted hundreds of performers, there was only one spot open in the dance group. And although the competition was narrowed down to just four, shockingly, J-Lo didn't get it. But this woman did, Carla Kama. <laughs> Carla, who's now a choreographer in Los Angeles, didn't even realize until years later that she got picked over J-Lo. I was like, no way. It's really flattering to, I'll be able to tell my grandkids. But J-Lo didn't have to sit home sulking for long. Here it comes, you'll hear it as though there it was. The following year, in 1991, the Fly Girls hired J-Lo as a dancer. And the rest is history. Quit playing games with my heart. Quit playing games with my heart. These five young men are not playing games. Kevin Richardson, A.J. McLean, Nick Carter, Ryan B. Rock Latrell, and Howard Howie D. Durow are the Backstreet Boys. We don't have a lead singer, um, we all sing, so I'm just a member, that's all I am. They may be the hottest singing group in the music world today that most adult Americans have never heard of. We're from Europe and they're really famous there. The Backstreet Boys have been heartthrobs to teenage girls throughout Europe for more than two years. MTV, thank you. They won the coveted MTV European Viewer's Choice Award in 1996 beating out both the Spice Girls and Oasis. Ding dong. The harmonic sound isn't exactly new. But some critics say the Backstreet Boys' style is fresh. It definitely has that 90s twist to it. It's got that R&B style, it's got a heavy beat, and it's got a lot of energy in a way that I don't think a lot of groups have. Group ages 17 to 25 are from Orlando, Florida and Lexington, Kentucky. They got together through their common interest, music. I heard that there was a vocal group that was looking for another singer, so I hooked up with AJ, Nick and Howie and then I brought my cousin Brian into it and we've been together now for almost uh, five years. The boys figured they'd have more success launching in Europe and so far... They've reportedly sold more than 10 million albums in 35 countries, sold out a concert tour of Canadian cities in less than an hour, and have starred in seven music videos. There's no place like home. Now they're trying to make it big in the USA. This past spring, they released their first American album. One song soared as high as number two on the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts. Late last month, they completed a whirlwind 10-day U.S. tour. The uh, turnout has been great, the crowds have been great, it's awesome. While their harmonizing has received mostly praise, early reviews of their live U.S. performances have been mixed. And some critics say the appeal is strictly for the kiddies. But those kids, the ones who buy the albums and the concert tickets, are already saying the Backstreet Boys are here to stay. Oh, they're going to be big for a while. It's tearing up my heart when I'm with you. They're the hottest group around. In sync, five friends from Florida who are tearing up the charts and young girls' hearts. I love you so much, Jesse. Oh my God, you guys are so nice. But there's more to these superstar young men than fancy dance steps. Behind the music are some of the biggest hearts in the business, and they're about to make one special child's dream come true. Are you crying? <laughs> I think she is. Meet Tori Ackley, a teenager who touches your heart with her music. But life isn't always sweet music for this pretty 16-year-old. Born with a rare condition called Williams Syndrome, Tori struggles with the simplest tasks like math and understanding directions. Still, some call this unusual affliction a mixed blessing. You see, many with Williams syndrome have a surprising passion and talent for music. And at a camp for these special people, I learned the most intriguing aspect of those battling Williams syndrome. It's their outgoing personalities, often called cocktail party syndrome. Hi, guys. <laughs> I like your shirt. Are you married? 
Uh-huh. Oh, my God. <laughs> they steal your heart with their warmth and affection. William Sinem people are very beautiful, unique, strong, and very lovable. Still, Tori knows she's not like other kids. Her life is often filled with loneliness. To get past her pain, Tori taught herself to play piano and even writes her own words and music. What do you want the world to know about Tori Ackley, the up-and-coming musician? Is that I'm not just a person who's different. I'm someone who's really caring and nice to people and that I can really help them when they're very, very lonely and upset. With your music? With my music. But Tori dreams of more. She dreams of being a star and being with stars. And while we can't make all of Tori's dreams come true, this is one we can handle. Enter in sync, five fantastic guys who never forget their fans. How you doing? Good. But on this day, these talented boys are waiting to meet one special fan, Tori. And what's the big dream for Tori Ackley? When we arrived at Tori's Massachusetts home, she thought we'd come just to hear her play. But we soon told her the truth. Because I haven't been completely honest with you today. Because we're not only here to spend some time at your house, but we've got a group of people that really, really want to hear you play. And you know what their name is? What? InSync. Oh my God. Soon Tori and her parents were loading up the car, getting ready for the chance of a lifetime. And when her dream finally came true, she handled it like a pro. Nice to meet you. As thousands got ready to watch InSync perform, Tori performed for them. Tori learned this in one day. One day. No sheet music. Nothing. So you play by ear? She played the boys one of their hit songs, and the rest was musical magic. While Tori can play just about anything by ear, it was her own songs, music that comes from her heart, that won the hearts of these boys. It just comes natural for you, huh? Yep. That's great. Who yeah. taught you? Um, I taught myself how to, actually. That's great. Really? Yeah, like, that is such a gift. Yeah. Impressed with Tori's passion for music, the boys gave her encouragement she'll cherish forever. You should always follow your dreams. Uh, you know, God gave you a talent, and, you know, this is it. Music uh, business keep going. is a big business, and there's room for everybody. And I'm sure there's plenty of room for you, sweetie. I think you are oh, a wonderfully, you so much. wonderfully talented human being. But for Tori, it isn't fame that matters most. She has more important things um, on her mind. How often do you get to see her parents? That's a very good question. Yeah. Since we are on the road a lot, it is hard. Um, what we do is we bring them with us. Oh. If we can't be with them, we might we bring them with us. <laughs> Tori finished her perfect day in the front row as InSync wowed some 20,000 screaming girls. It was a day that reminded this special teenager that no matter what challenges life brings, dreams really can come true. This day happened and I'll never forget it. Thanks, Stacey. How you doing, honey, baby? Beyonce Knowles, the singer from the sizzling group Destiny's Child, hit a real high note this summer. Shazam! You what you want me to say it? Oh God. Shazam! <laughs> She's parlayed a successful singing career into a big screen role in the film Austin Powers in Goldmember. The future better get ready for me because I'm Foxy Cleopatra and I'm a whole lot of woman. <laughs> it was my first movie. I was around all these legendary people and I learned so much every day and I laughed every day, all day. She really was on that screen like she belonged there and I think people really, really, I think are going to start writing roles for her because she did uh -huh. have such a big impression in Gold Member. Shut your mouth. Now don't think for a minute that the hit movie role, hot songs, magazine covers, and commercials are part of an overnight success story, not by a long shot. Yep, this is Beyonce on Star Search in 1992, performing her heart out. This videotape was shot by family members watching from the audience. The group is called Girls' Time, which would eventually become Destiny's Child. But like a lot of stars, they didn't win. 
But when I talked to Beyonce about their, their loss on Star Search, she told me they cried backstage. That was um, a crushing loss for them. What a lot of people don't know is that Beyonce, who turned 21 this summer, has been performing since she was about seven years old, growing up in Houston. Her career has been strategically managed by her parents, Matthew and Tina Knowles. You have to believe. I absolutely believe that. I mean, my philosophy is if I don't believe it, I can't expect anyone else to believe it. So I absolutely uh, saw and vision the success that we're having today, and I see and vision even greater success. You cannot talk about Beyonce without talking about Destiny's Child. As a matter of fact, Beyonce doesn't really talk about herself without referencing the group. To your left. And what about those constant rumors of an inevitable breakup now that she's on the big screen and planning a solo album? Um, Destiny's Child is not broken up. We still talk every day. We're still going to go on tour and do more performances together. Being in a group is hardly a bad thing when you've sold more than 15 million albums worldwide and won two Grammys. It's very surreal to me. Um, I don't even realize. People say I don't realize, which I don't think I do. How, how much success Destiny's Child and, and I've had and my whole family has had. It. It's just such a blessing. But along with the blessings, there's been a curse or two. Two former members of Destiny's Child fired Matthew Knowles as their manager. He then dropped them from the group and the two women promptly sued. Destiny's Child also found itself in the middle of another lawsuit claiming defamation, suggesting that the lyrics from the hit Survivor were directed at the former members. All the lawsuits have been settled. It's actually part of success, lawsuits, and they come out of the woodwork. With the lawsuits behind him, Matthew Knowles is building a real family empire. Um, I'm proud to be your sister. Y'all give it up. I love it very much. So much. Inside Edition was there exclusively when Beyonce introduced her 16-year-old sister Solange at the New York City Music Showcase. Afterwards, our cameras were in the dressing room, and the sisters couldn't stop talking about each other. I am very, very proud of her. I definitely just look up to her, and so much that I know I wouldn't know if she wasn't my big sister, so I'm just really appreciative of that. is the summer of Ricky Martin. Not since Elvis has the sight of swiveling hips caused such a stir. Oh, so hot, beautiful, I love him. A lot of people telling you how good you are, you know, but you know, you can start flying and it could be very dangerous, very painful when you start coming down. But the loco scene that follows the 27-year-old Puerto Rican singer is showing no sign of coming down. Ricky's even won a Grammy and counts Madonna as one of his biggest fans. Hi, baby. Oh, I love. How are you? <laughs> we thought it'd be fun to take a look at this heartthrob before Ricky Mania hit. Look at me. Hi! <laughs> we spent time with Ricky over the last few years, and looking at our old tapes, you can clearly see a star being born. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, tomorrow doesn't exist. A few years ago, Ricky could never have known the incredible success waiting for him right around the corner. <sighs> but Ricky's keeping his cool, maybe because he's been groomed for superstardom all of his adult life. After all, he was only 12 when he joined the Latin group Menudo. It gave me the opportunity to know what I really wanted in life. Journalist Kathleen Tracy is the author of the new book, Ricky Martin, Red Hot and on the Rise. He has been working towards this moment really ever since he left Menudo. And it's not totally by accident. A lot of this is really planning on his part. Like all the Menudo boys, Ricky was booted from the group at age 17. But while the other members drifted into obscurity, Ricky was on a mission and became the biggest Latin star around. Lori Majewski is a senior editor at Teen People. Around the world, he was, he was probably as big as Madonna for the longest time. But Ricky wanted to make it in America. In the early 90s, he went to Hollywood, where he won a part on General Hospital as a Latin lover. It's time for you to trust me. During his General Hospital days, Ricky gave our cameras an all-access pass behind the scenes. From the rehearsals... I am not prepared to live my life without you. 
to the tapings. Okay, you ready? Ricky was thrilled to be a Latin star making a name for himself on American TV. The adrenaline is, it's, is amazing. I don't know, I, I, I enjoy it very much and I think this is what I want to be doing forever. Ricky's old General Hospital co-star, Carrie Shane. I think he was in, in a time of experimenting um, at that point in his life and really figuring out what he wanted to do. In my life. The next time we met up with Ricky was in 1996 when another of his dreams came true. I am one with the gods and heaven is near. Ricky was performing on Broadway in the hit musical Les Miserables. It feels amazing to reach one of my goals, uh, but it opens new, new doors to things that I want to keep doing. Music thrills me. Music is something that I don't want to stop doing ever. And it's with music that Ricky was to become a household name outside of Latin America. Last year, he recorded his very first album in English. And when Living La Vida Loca was unleashed, it went straight to number one. Ricky's crossover success is no surprise to his old co-star. He can do whatever he wants to do because he's just... He's got that thing. And now Ricky's dream of only a few years ago is a reality. I want to bring my music all over the world. If you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. Get ready for the invasion of the Spice Girls. Friendship never ends. Their debut song, Wannabe, is number one on the Billboard charts for the second week in a row. Wannabe and the album Spice have sold 2.6 million copies in the U.S. alone. So how are the Spice Girls reacting to their overnight success? That's it. You've got it. My expression lost the words. I'm just amazed. If you want to be my lover. When I get up on stage, you know, and you get like 20,000 people screaming at you, I just think, wow, they, this is just me and my friends, and, and they like what we're doing. Who are the Spice Girls? They're a quintet of spunky British ladies ranging in age from 21 to 25. They've been described as a kind of female new kids on the block. The Spice Girls are perhaps the greatest marketing ploy in pop music since the monkeys. Somebody sat down at a drawing board and said, let's create an all-girl group, and they've gone out and done it. So to learn the details of the creation of the Spice Girls, we traveled to their native England. Every day they came in here with a mirrored wall, and uh, they could dance and practice, and they basically lived in this room. Ian Lee runs Trinity Studios, a small music rehearsal space outside of London, where the Spice Girls were formed back in 1994. It all started when 400 Spice Girl wannabes showed up for an open call for an all-girl pop band. Inside Edition has the exclusive video of the Spice Girl auditions. Nothing exciting about them at all, really. Looking back on the auditions, you actually wonder, you know, what it was that got them chosen. Back in 94, super cool Spice Girl Melanie C was just plain old Melanie Chisholm. Spice Girl Victoria Adams was belting out a show tune from Cabaret. And Spice Girl Melanie B, who critics say has the best pipes of the group, was Melanie Brown. Ian says after the five lucky Spice Girls were picked, they didn't exactly make beautiful music together. They didn't know how to harmonize, so it was, yeah, it was uh, not too pleasant in the first few weeks. But they had star quality. They had that bubble, they had that fun, they had that uh, interactive appeal between each other. The manager who molded the Arrhythmics in the early 80s polished up the Spice Girls and got them signed with Virgin Records. They had a hit first in Japan, and within the last six months, Wannabe has become a smash around the world. If you wanna be my lover. They have a certain electricity about them, and even their record company don't quite always know what they're going to do. Yes, part of the appeal of the Spice Girls is their spontaneity. Spice Girls never relaxed, no, no. Something this blushing interviewer learned the hard way. Fuck them! Yes, the Spice Girls act just like a rowdy bunch of girlfriends. Even as double winners at last month's Brit Awards, England's answer to the Grammys, they were up to their usual hijinks. You know, I was looking for best male artist, but 
I don't think I'm going to get it, do you? If you haven't noticed, the Spice Girls are not going for a girl next door image. One sports a pierced tongue, another a nose ring, and most of them have tattoos. It's superb marketing. It's naughty, but nice. Only time will tell if the Spice Girls will be one-hit wonders. But even if they are just a flash in the pan, these gals are going to have fun during their 15 minutes of fame. If you want to be my lover.